Hello everybody, Trano here, and today we are back on the Air Superiority Dev Server to look at the new Russian Rank 8 T90M. And this tank has got quite a few people riled up, and to be honest I kind of understand where they're coming from. Um, to sort of showcase what I'm talking about, we're going to go to the protection analysis, and we're going to compare it to the M1A2 SEP, the V2 version. So. If we get the M830 heat FS shell and we fire it at the T90M, you can see that there is a little bit of the lower hull front plate that's vulnerable, but for the rest of it, it's only a few spots around the turret, very small areas. So not exactly areas you're going to be able to hit in a very fast moving battle. And if we use the M830A1 heat FS multipurpose shell, again, much the same situation. The stock APFS DS round or the initial APFS DS round, we can penetrate a little bit more, we've got a bit more opportunities around the lower hull frontal plate, but again the turret it's mainly against the mantlet, and then if we compare it with the top tier APFS DS round, yeah much the same as with the initial round, you can get the lower hull frontal plate and some areas around the mantlet, so if this tank has its lower hull front plate behind cover, you have very limited opportunities to take it out. Now if we move on to the M1A2 SEP V2, which also came out in this update and is the American top tier tank, and if we compare it against the T90M, again we start off with the stock heat FS shell, you can see straight away it's a lot more vulnerable, so the upper hull front plate is extremely penetratable from basically the stock round. The HE round also surprisingly does very well against the top tier Abrams. The initial APFS DS round can again go through the frontal hull plate very easily. Its anti tank guided missile can again go through the same areas as before and these areas up here and even get through the lower hull frontal plate. And then the very top tier APFS DS round, like most of the tank is now solid green apart from the turret cheeks. And this is a bit of a problem because basically the T90M is invulnerable to the top tier Abrams tank in most areas apart from around the mantlet and the lower hull front plate, but the Abrams can be penetrated from the front pretty easily by the T90M. And it's not like you can even say this weapon station up here is going to be a weakness because if you fire HE shells at it, um, it doesn't actually seem to go through, whereas like on the M1A2 SEP V2, the T90M standard HE shell can straight up destroy it by shooting these upper weapon stations. So um. Yeah, like I say, it's a bit of a ridiculous situation. And it's kind of annoying because in many ways the T90M is sort of what I was expecting out of this update. You know, a top tier tank that actually changes the top tier gameplay significantly. You know, a massive jump up from rank 7 tanks to rank 8. But I'm just not sure it actually performs like this in real life. I mean, we've seen in Ukraine that these aren't exactly hard to knock out. I mean, they're not easy either, I'm guessing, but they have been destroyed. So have Western tanks, but... And you can see it has got very good composite armor. I'm not going to read out all of that because it's got about eight, ten different armor types and like variations there. It's fitted with ERA blocks over the top of that. And the ERA blocks are ridiculous. I mean, it gives 250 millimeters of protection against kinetic weapons. So, you know, your standard ERA blocks on the Abrams, I think was like, what, five to 20 millimeters, depending on which one you were using. And again, this is fitted all around the turret, apart from, well, it does have a bit around the mantlet, but. Obviously they haven't quite finished this entirely because this doesn't even have a measurement listed. And you've got very strong composite armour around the turret cheeks. And then you've got more ERA armour around the sides. And more composite armour that doesn't actually have any measurements listed. And then interestingly we've got a 20mm spool liner. So obviously the spool liner is supposed to catch any spooling from incoming fire. And that does greatly improve protection against incoming fire. And then you've got these slat armor around here, which is supposed to set off heat rounds before they can hit the armor, you know, make them prematurely detonate. Got more ERA armor around the sides. And the actual armor itself isn't hugely impressive, like the non composite armor, only 80 millimeters thick on the sides. And in theory, it looks like 60 millimeters here, but again, that's implemented in the composite armor. The actual lower hull frontal plate, as I've said before, is a bit of a weak spot, but if you can get that behind cover, you're pretty much set. And of course, the rear armor isn't great, only 40 millimeters or so, but at least for the hull, the turret still seems to be pretty thick. But again, the rear spots and all tanks are going to be like that. 
and it also comes with the Coaxial 7.62 mm machine gun and your 12.7 mm machine gun on the roof here. It can be fitted with a dozer blade. It comes with thermal vision devices for the gunner and tank commander, while night vision devices are available for the driver and as a backup for the tank commander. It comes with smoke grenades, a smoke generating system. It comes with an additional ERA kit, so presumably you can actually fit even more armor to this, which will just make it even harder to destroy for enemies. It also comes with the laser warning system and laser range finder, and it comes with the same shells as on the regular T98. So you've got your heat FS shell, HE, bog standard APFS DS round, the anti-tank guided missile with tandem warhead, and an improved APFS DS round. And like we saw with the M1A2, it is perfectly able to deal with enemy tanks. It also comes with a slightly improved engine. This is 999 horsepower. The T90As was only about 884 horsepower. It seems to have the same amount of gears, so seven gears forward and only one gear backwards, so a top speed in reverse of 2.6 miles per hour, 37 miles per hour when going forward. And the commander has optics with a zoom of four times to 12 times zoom. The gunner has optics of four times to 12 times zoom as well. It's got a two plane gun stabilizer, targeting speed in the vertical of 22 degrees, 24 degrees in the horizontal, and it comes with auto loader giving a reload rate of 7.1 seconds, and it can carry 40 shells. And it has the same crew complement, so your driver down here, your commander who can also find the main armament, and your gunner in the turret as well, so three crew in total. And so, yeah, in many ways, like I said, in many ways, this is kind of what I expect from a tier 8 tank. This is a bit of a paradigm shift by the looks of things. It's just a shame that basically, you know, the other nations didn't get anything like that. And you can see that spool liner does have quite a bit of an effect. There's a lot less spool there than usual by the looks of things. I mean, I feel like the commander would have got hit by quite a lot of spooling if this didn't have any spool liner. But... It just basically concentrated everything into a very small area. And like that's going to make a massive difference in game as well, because it's going to be extremely hard to actually penetrate this tank. And then when you do, your post-penetration damage effects are going to be massively reduced. And like I say, I don't know if it's meant to be like this in real life. And I think this is the other problem. This tank was from, what, 2017? So do we actually know what its armor is exactly? I mean, we know it's been destroyed in Ukraine, and they've probably got various examples. And I know some have probably been sent off to other countries. But obviously, does Gaijin know what the armor on this is? I think that's one of the problems with having, you know, very, very modern tanks. It's very hard to actually decide, you know, whether it's supposed to have all of these stats without actually having the publicly available information. And so I can see this possibly being changed, or at least the Western tanks being changed, because I'm pretty sure most modern tanks have spool liner. I mean, it's not exactly a new invention. And I, again, I find it very hard to believe that the armor on the Abrams is so bad compared to the T90M. And I'm going to guess that the um, other nations' tanks are going to have similar problems against this, like the Leopard, the Challenger, the Ariete, the Clerks. In fact, looking at the Leopard 2A7V, it looks like it's got slightly more penetration around the lower bit of the turret. So potentially it's just a bit of an Abrams issue. But again, it's still going to be a fairly hard target to hit, especially in the midst of battle. So yeah, I can see this being changed possibly when the update actually comes out and to be fair this is the dev server they do tend to change their stats quite a lot a lot of the time things aren't implemented properly or are missing but we'll just have to see how it is actually implemented in the actual update anyway this is just a quick video looking at the t90m hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully you'll join me for future episodes i've been toreno and i'll see you next time